Something's been off between us lately And I can't figure out why We've been on two different pages lately Pretending that we're fine I'm so tired of the unknown Always the way that we've grown And I can't seem to Hello. get it off uh, Thank you for tuning in this is Amanda, and you are listening to the Pseudo Stereo Local Music Feature on Radio UTD. We've got a special interview today. Woo! Uh, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> that, Hello! Yeah, we've got uh, Zeke Forever in the station. It's going to be fun. We've already been talking. If you tuned in 10 minutes ago, <laughs> you may have heard a little little testing. Yes. Yeah. A little bit of testing of the mics, since this is our first live interview we've done since... This is so cool. I'm so excited. <laughs> Same here. Oh my gosh. And we, if you are new to Radio UTD, you can see on the tuner page, we do have a comment section now where you can submit like a sentence or a question and we'll be able to see it over here. Uh, so if you have any questions uh, for Zeke Forever, feel free to put them in the comments and submit those and we'll get to those questions at the end of this interview. But again, thank you so much for tuning in with with COVID and, you know, these buildings just closing down in March without really a concrete plan. Uh, all of our DJs and bloggers and audio techs are so excited to start just bringing back Radio UTD for this school year. And we just finished off our first week of programming and we are just finishing up it up on a very high note with this interview. So let's just get right into it. So this is your first time visiting Radio UTD. We started communicating in the summer, but can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and how you came to become a musician? Yes. So my real name is Keena McWilliams. I'm, my first name is actually my mom's maiden name, which I always love, and I think that's so cool. I started making music when I was really young. My mom and her family were like musicians, and my dad is like... He's a songwriter, but he can't sing, so it's, <laughs> it's fine. But I got kind of like my talents from both of them. Like my dad's super creative. My mom is like a beast at music. And so I just kind of learned from them, learned writing, learned how to write. And I got a Wii microphone. You remember those like karaoke games? Oh and my like, gosh. I plugged it into my computer and I just learned. I taught myself how to record myself. And I was telling you like I wanted to be like a radio DJ. So I kind of already knew like those kind of things. And one year when I was like in sixth grade, I found Mixcraft, which is something that I still record music on with. And I just started making music with my cousin. Um, if you go on YouTube and look up Zeke Forever, you will literally find like the worst music video ever. It's so terrible. It's called Live Life to the Fullest. And the only reason why it's up is because I don't know the username thing anymore. So it's just up there, but it's terrible. And I was like running around in the backyard with like my Fidice and Ferb shirt and just singing this terrible song. But I've always written music. I just always written music to like escape. And that's something that I still do to this day is just write to hopefully get all of my emotions out so I don't like freak out on everybody <laughs> during the day. And that's just kind of how it started for me. Yeah, for sure. Music is such a creative medium and also an outlet. Oh, yeah. I think music is beautiful. And the reason why I'm just so passionate towards it is because a lot of things that I felt like I couldn't say or a lot of things that I felt that I was like nervous to, I could put in a song. And that's still kind of how it is today it's just a way for me to i'm not good at communicating i've learned this the more and more i grow but i know that i can write a really good song and tell you how i feel <laughs> without actually having to tell you you can just press play and hear it so it's, that's really cool of this you were saying you know how it's almost your outlet to getting those emotions out and communicating with one of the trailers you posted on your current youtube you said that kryptonite was about letting go yes when i first started writing kryptonite first of all it was under like a totally different i had like seven different album names Ooh. like it was at the time it was when i feel and i had just released a single called blind and this was like right before the pandemic happened and there's three songs that I have on the album that was like right in that time. Control, Relapse, and Fool Me. All of those songs are like, Relapse is about 
smoking, which is not good, guys, don't do it. Uh, um, and control was just about settling because I wanted love, but I just kind of settled for like the situationship and then fooled me. It's kind of like in the title, like I was just duped. And that was kind of like before COVID kind of like ruined everyone's life, really. And we had to like isolate ourselves. And so this album for me was kind of realizing what I was doing. And just like writing a lot of these songs helped me realize what I was doing and try to like move forward and get out of those situations or just to get out of my head. Um, and so when I listen to like I listen to it today because I'm a weirdo and I'm like, I just want to know what I'm talking about today. I just like think about the stories and like the person I was writing the song and it's just so weird to see. It's really weird. <laughs> Is it like a time capsule for you of sorts? Yeah. Like so? so like I've always said that I can always tell like where I was with each album like Dear Golden Boy I was like kind of figuring out myself and I had just like moved out so like I could find my own voice and I was just like yeah I'm golden and blah 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 and with Kryptonite it was more of a I've always hated being alone I have my friend Carly here as she knows I've always hated being alone so the fact that I was basically forced to kind of be in my own bubble and if I wasn't like I was still super anxious because like COVID so it really taught me that like these are my flaws and they're pretty big flaws and am I going to deal with it or am I just gonna like settle and like you know be in my own head about it so yeah that was one consolation of the isolation yeah where we needed to be into to prevent this from getting worse but with that you know with with the song kryptonite I mean you say it in the lyrics like yeah. loneliness used to be my kryptonite and I feel like you really did explore those times. There was for sure, like from the times I listened to it, there is like a gradual theme across the board and that's further kind of cemented with those samples that you included. Yeah. Can you go into that a bit? Um, for the album, well, I'll take it back to say this. As an artist, I, when I was listening to music as a kid, I felt really alone, but I listened to music to kind of get myself out of like that feeling. And so as an artist, I want anyone that can relate to my music to know that they're not alone. Like I was going through the same situations and I think that during the time where I was like super lonely and like just felt like there was not really a light at the end of the tunnel I had family and friends that were around that were like constantly checking in on me like my dad he's on the album twice um, and he has like this big long monologue about greatness comes with great power and that was what he was telling me during the time where I really just didn't believe in myself you know my sister we have like this really funny and cool relationship and she was like checking in on me when I was like unemployed didn't have a job so I wanted to make sure that when you listen to a Zeke Forever album that you're gonna have a sense of okay I can do this like I'm not alone the message of that album is there's always gonna be light your nights won't last always and um I lived through it and I just kind of wanted anyone to listen to feel that you just so. disappear with the night I guess you thought that I would be a part of my mind Loneliness used to be my prayer tonight But tonight I'm thinking I might be just fine Might be just fine With this, I mean, it, it is very vulnerable for you to do and to share those moments, but it's again how you, you know, communicated your feelings. And it's very beautiful how you wanted to, you know, let other people know that these feelings, you know, they're not to just this one, like, what is wrong with me for thinking like this or feeling like this, especially with some of the samples you included. Yeah. So when it came to, because on this album, there were a lot of collabs you did with mm -hmm. other artists. How did you go about working with those? Like, did you let them know your theme, your central idea for the album, or did these collaborations? I didn't. Okay. It's crazy. Like, Fade, um, Global Octopus, they are so cool. And, like, I remember I had saw them at a marketplace, and I was like, we had, like, this artist marketplace and didn't. So, like, you would come and you could buy, like, our merch, and I had met them, and they were just really cool. And I was actually working on a song that's, like, not on the album, but I really just wanted to work with them. And so I had sent them one song. And then after like a few weeks, I started working on Fade. And right after, I was just like, hey, this song is about like clarification. I don't really have verses yet, so just do whatever you want to do. And when I tell you I got like the verse back and I was just like, yes, like I was freaking out. 
um but majority of the time i just let them do say and do whatever they wanted to i think that at the time when i was working on songs and when i was doing collaborating i had no idea what i was doing i was just like i know i want to like be relatable and i know i want to just tell my story but i didn't know how um i think that the only collaboration that i really had or the two collaborations that i had um where i did it in person was with ariana culture uh for relapse and that song was done like right before um covid kind of took its toll and then at marie where that one we did together which was really cool and we did that at my apartment like right when things were opening up again but for the most part all of the other ones we did like virtually and it was kind of cool yeah how was that honestly i would just have like an open hook and i'd be like hey like you want to get on there like justin west um cool artist too and i just sent him the song and when i came back like it was no revisions i think most of the artists like just really just did their thing and it was not like a uh, oh i don't like this can you redo it everyone like brought their a game and i thought that was really cool so shout out to y'all i love y'all <laughs> All those they were they did all such a great job like especially the global octopus one. Oh I yeah was, oh. i like pinched myself when that happened like just knowing that the vibe was right everything was correct because you know when you collaborate with people it's always like uh, like i don't know if you're gonna do what i want or what i envision because i'm also very much a control freak so but no they killed it they killed it killed it and speaking speaking of faith since we are on the topic like three months ago i think you released the the music video yes how is how is that ah, i'm about to like freak out for a little bit my best friend lauren um i hope she's listening um she was like i want to do a music video i was like great i want to do a music video too and i had never really shared um any of the album with really anyone other than like the singles that were already out and i sent her fade and she was like i love it this is what we're doing and I was watching a lot of that 70s show and I was watching a lot of Insecure when we were doing that and the song is based off of my life but also based off of Insecure where like Molly and Issa they weren't friends anymore or like they were friends but it was just weird and they didn't know what they were doing and we wanted to make it as like cheap as possible like as low budget as possible she and I we just kind of like put together also Ryan we just kind of put it together and um, I wanted to really highlight a lot of local artists because I feel like um, we're cool and in Denton like we have such a cool cool local group and so I had obviously Global Octopus but Retro P who actually just released a single too and he's such a great like a great rapper visionary like just great and um, Alex Oeza who is really cool too it just happened like I don't know how to like and when you have a good team and especially like with Lauren and Ryan like everything that I just mumble they'll have it down and so it was a really fun experience yeah it was it was it was fun to experience as well Yay! like just knowing that y'all kind of had had a great time that's that makes it even more better and the little behind the scenes that you posted yeah. along with it yeah that was it was a great day um i was really i'm always like super nervous about things and so i was like oh i hope nothing goes wrong i hope nothing goes wrong and like i hope i can perform well and all that so just try. i'm really hard on myself but when we did it everyone's we were all on the same vibe we were all hyping each other up and like global octopus killed it retro p killed it everyone were on there like we were just all on our a games we had pizza it was fun it was just it was a fun time like that will probably be like one of like my favorite things that i did this year yeah glad y'all got to have that happen because it, it looked phenomenal do you are you planning to do any other future music videos with your friends i want to so bad i know that me and lauren have talked about doing another music video but honestly if i do another music video i want it to be for the next song that i want to put out and it's not on the album so but that's a little far in the head. I kind of want to push Kryptonite as much as I can. If I do do a music video, I definitely want to do one for Unprepared. Because Unprepared is such a vibe for me. And um, that would be really cool. But we haven't really talked about it yet. If anybody wants to find the music video, though, come on. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, Kryptonite just released. I yes, think two, weeks, two ago. weeks ago. Yeah, that's my baby. That's my baby. Y'all check it out on your streaming platforms. YouTube, they're all released on, on yes. YouTube as well. Yeah. Check out the Fade music video while you're at it. But for future endeavors, I know you just mentioned working to push the album. Are you planning to do any virtual or in-person concerts? Um, so I actually am a part of the No Stress Fest. 
that is October 2nd at Harvard House in Denton, Texas, which I am announcing for the first time here, so that's cool. I don't know the full lineup, so that's actually terrible on my part, but it's going to be a really fun time. Um, I'm actually started working on just like the performance of that too, so it's going to be really fun. Um, also, I'm doing like a live stream for Move Texas um, for like uh, voting registration and stuff like that, which is really cool, which I was like, whenever they emailed me, I was like, ah, what? Like, this is so cool. So um, I know that the live stream, I want to say is September the 28th, so that's going to be really fun. Is what, and everyone registered to vote like come on now what you doing so yeah awesome i think we'll be wrapping up our interview real soon but since you know we're still on air if you want to i guess shout out maybe some more local music artists um, oh okay um so retro p just released a, a new single out and it's really cool um obviously global octopus that's my babies Wow, everyone that I work with, I love. So I'm just like <laughs> shouting them all out. We, we got the Pokemon Jazz oh, if yes. we go over. So. Yes, come on, Pokemon Jazz. That was actually really fun. I like Pokemon Jazz. I definitely just had like a weird reaction when you said it. I was like, yes, play that. It's a vibe. It's really <laughs> But yeah, um, thank you again for coming into the station and having us interview you. This oh, was... thank you. No, thank you for having me. This was really fun. We really have been like in contact for like the longest trying to get <laughs> this to happen. Well, it's, yeah. Which, by the way, y'all, if you are a local musician listening um, or a UTD student that's interested in, you know, maybe getting into learning about the local music scene, you can contact local music at radioutd.com for direct contact. But we've also got a few forms on our website if you are a band or an artist and would like to have your music play during our local music feature as well as we are starting up pseudo stereos not this month but next month you know pending cases go down and you know all our techs feel comfortable Oof, recording thank you again yeah this was so fun thank you so much amanda you're awesome you're awesome Ooh, that's Dude, i i was expecting <laughs> to be a nervous wreck on air because it's been a while since we've been done a live interview and yeah. I'm just very good at editing after if I just if we just mumble or go off but this is this has been very organic and I really Yay. appreciate it. I was actually really nervous too this is my first college radio interview so I was like girl I don't know what I'm gonna say and I was like me too well, I, I, I had some you know I try to plan yeah. for that structure. I did. I, You know, it's crazy. I had a monologue plan, and I didn't even say that. So there's that. <laughs> I mean, do you want to say it now? If, no. You know? Well, okay, I will say that... Um, I'll talk about the album, I guess. Kryptonite for me is, like, my second baby. And um, obviously, I have, like, new songs... Or old songs, like, Dear Golden Boy. That's, like, one of my most proudest things. But Kryptonite is, like, a life diary for me. So I'm just really thankful to everyone that listened to it. And super grateful for a lot of the friends that were a part of the project. But but then also like my family that um, support me because my family has like really really supported me for the past couple of actually years um, just seeing me like really depressed and just like oh I don't know if I'm gonna do this because honestly writing kryptonite I was definitely just like in my head and I'm like oh okay so I'm just gonna go back to school and like be complacent and I'm really thankful for like a lot of the friends and family that just kept me going and just kept pushing and supporting me. So thank y'all. And that's it. <laughs> it's perfect because we've got 22 seconds till 22 Pokemon seconds. Jazz. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, um, this has been Landon Escapade. Um, and tonight we're going to play the smooth sounds of Pokemon Jazz. Um, and thank y'all for listening. Is it playing? Oh yeah. <laughs>